worsening inflation could be the headwind that stalls market momentum as well. At least that's what our next guest has to say. He's joining us now. We've got Mark Pinto, head of America's equities at Janice Henderson Investors. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning. I mean, talk to me about your reaction to this print. Is this surprising to you? Well, you know, I think the consumer has definitely been a little bit weaker since 2021, and we've seen spending in discretionary categories uh, not quite at the levels that we saw pre um, or during the pandemic and coming out of the pandemic. Um, we're definitely seeing examples of consumers trading down, uh, looking to buy, you know, better priced items and maybe not getting the premium product. Where we are seeing the consumer spend a lot of money, however, is in travel and leisure. It seems that consumers are gravitating more towards experiential spending, if you will, rather than buying hard goods. So in general, I think the consumer's health is is pretty good. The um, the well-being index, which is a tracked measure of consumer strength, is close to 99. Um, so, you know, the consumer is in decent shape, but they're definitely being uh, selective in terms of where they spend their money. I'm curious, Mark, you're reading just in terms of the timeline of that rate cut. Do you still believe, given the fact that we are starting to see some weakening, I think it's fair to say, within the economy, at least the most recent prints that we have seen, is it still too early to cut rates at this point? Well, as you know, the uh, the April jobs report was definitely weaker than expected with 175,000 new jobs. And, and I think even more important, importantly, wage inflation moderated a little bit. So... Um, you know, you take that and you can also add the fact that second quarter GDP got revised down to 3.3 percent. It does seem like the higher rate policy is starting to impact the economy on the margin. And from our standpoint, that actually um, set, sets up the backdrop for a possible rate cut. And, and honestly, can't tell you whether it's going to be June or September. But uh, Chairman Powell was pretty clear in saying that um, it's a very high bar to take rates higher, which makes me believe the Fed is looking more at cutting than um, than anything else. I'm curious then, does the Fed care that consumers think inflation is staying above 3%? That's not the number they want. No, they clearly want it um, below 3% and as close to 2 as possible. Um, you know, I think they're obviously tracking all the different metrics. I think wage inflation um, from our vantage point is one of the most important ones. And again, as I said in the April jobs report, we saw that wage inflation moderated. Uh, obviously, there are parts of inflation that are out of control of the Fed, whether it's energy prices, um, housing prices, those are you know more on, driven by externalities and cyclical um, factors. But uh, you know, I think look, the Fed is trying to manage the mandate between keeping inflation in check, but also keeping the economy on solid footing. You mentioned some of that sector performance, and we know that utilities are up 8% this month. Do you read that as a flight to safety or as evidence that the rally and the momentum that we're seeing is starting to broaden? Well, you know, we've been hope we've been wondering when we would see a broadening in the market. Uh, the Magnificent Seven uh, were clearly a major driver of the performance in uh, 2023. Uh, the S and P is up 10% year to date, and it is a it is a broader rally. But we're still seeing a lot of strength in the growth, technology, and and healthcare areas. So um, I I think the market actually is showing a lot of resilience in this um, uncertain period in terms of rates. And 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 I don't think that um, if you look at the behavior of the market in different sectors. Um, we're seeing some very good uh, results. Q2, sorry, Q1 earnings were very strong. Um, overall, EPS was up 5%. Most companies beat expectations. So it doesn't feel like a defensive market to me. Um, and so utilities um, could be, you know, having their own individual drivers. But I don't think it's a it's an indication that that investors are looking for more um, conservative uh, types of bets. Yeah, Mark, that was going to be my exact question there. And then building further upon that, when we talk about the shift that we have seen to these defensive plays, it sounds like it might just be a rotation into those that had underperformed here since the start of the year. What does that, though, tell us about the likely action or the likely allocation that we will see in terms of market leadership from here on out? Well, I, again, I think the, um, you know, the people, this, this is a growth-oriented market. Um, growth stocks have outperformed value for quite a time being. We've got some major secular trends going on, whether it's artificial intelligence, um, uh, innovation in healthcare, and the growth in biotech, and the and the meeting of unmet medical needs with new therapies and companies. So I, it doesn't seem to me like um, it's necessarily 
uh, that, that people are, are shying away from the growthier parts of the market. There's some very powerful trends that are driving the market higher, uh, those that I mentioned. And by the way, they're, th those seem, uh, we're getting the benefit of that growth in even in a high rate environment. So um, I think the market's been incredibly resilient uh, given the uncertainty over interest rates. And that resilience has translated into investors um, not taking a defensive posture um, and yes, there has been a little bit of catch up, as you noted, um, with the broader market sort of trying to catch up to the to the highly concentrated uh, big holdings at the top of the S and P 500. But I mean, those companies are still doing really well. Whether it's you know an Amazon, Microsoft, or Nvidia, they're they're putting up some very impressive numbers, and um, and investors are are staying invested in those names. Many investors are excited. Looking ahead to NVIDIA's uh, next print here in a couple of weeks. All right, Mark Pinto, we have to leave it there. Head of America's Equities at Janice Henderson Investors. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.